key thing for me to, in understanding brain-based learning is to say, what do we know about the brain already that can help us tie in this to education to help really improve student learning? For example, every educator should know how the brain gets attention and how do we keep it. We should know what changes the brain. We should know what factors help make kids smart. And all of those we're starting to learn from how our brain works. And partly what I do is to share what's the connection between your work and how our brain works. One of the things that I've been sharing in our session today is the importance of getting kids to care. It's that buy-in piece. It's getting kids to say, I want to know this. It's important to me. And many teachers complain that kids aren't that way, like they're not motivated, they don't care, they're sort of sitting back or there's chit-chatting a lot. And I think for many teachers, they just were never taught, how do you just reach inside kids and get them to care? This is not because someone says, gee, kids should care. Actually, they're only in school for two reasons. One, it's the law, and second, their friends are there. But the reason that teachers need to get kids to care about what they do is critical in that is brains don't change without us buying into it. I always say if the brain's not buying, the brain's not changing. I think for generations, teachers have thought of themselves as being a source for kids. A source as in, I can provide content. But that paradigm is over, dead, and it's time to bury it. Any kid in the class with a mobile phone has access to more information on the planet than any teacher who's ever lived. Just having access to that content makes the content part of the teacher obsolete. Teachers have to get that. What I'm saying by this is that not that teachers are obsolete, but that teachers who see themselves as being the primary source of input, of information for their kids, that part of the job really is obsolete. So our brain can take in little bits and pieces of information all day long, but if you want it to get processed for testing quality, our brain limits that a lot. So for most teachers, 50-50 rule is a good one to follow. But half the time kids can take in information, half the time they need to work with it, sort it, process it, think about it, evaluate it, prioritize it, or whatever. And then the kid ends up being a pretty good learner. So when it comes to learning, more is not better, but having just enough and then time to work with it is better. Well, a couple of good sources. One of them, a book called Teaching with the Brain in Mind, which I wrote, is a good source. It's a book from ASCD, Teaching with the Brain in Mind. If you work at a Title I school and you've got a lot of kids from poverty, you might appreciate teaching with poverty in mind because that takes the perspective that if brains can change for the better, can they change for the worse? Yes, they do. Kids who grow up in poverty, their brain is different. So in Teaching with Poverty in Mind, I detail how the brain is different and what to do about it. And that's important. What do you do about it? I put on in-depth trainings here in San Antonio through Jensen Learning. And uh, any educator who attends those is going to find powerful, practical ideas to help increase student achievement at schools where kids grow up with tremendous disadvantages. But you can turn those into positives. So either through some of my in-depth workshops that are in San Antonio or other states around the United States, or for those that want to get the materials, there's books from ASCD. Good way to get in touch with what I do would be through jensenlearning.com, J-E-N-S-E-N, learning.com. I will say that uh, I put out a monthly newsletter that you can sign up for that's free, and that's at our site. You may also be interested in following my blog, 
which is also on the same site too. Just go to the upper right hand corner and click blog and you can follow some of the additions that I make all the time. My goal is to help educators do their job better and my perspective on that is through understanding the science of learning and that's critical because there's a lot of things that people tell you about learning out there and what I'm interested in is the science behind it. Can I show clearly that this works and we have some wonderful success stories of schools that have gone from like bottom 25% to the top 25% and you do that by doing the right thing for kids so hopefully we can get more and more kids to succeed and I hope I can see you uh, on my site at JensenLearning.com.